All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Yan Li, and I'm actually in Dr. Yue's lab, so uh, his compliments are, means nothing to me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, today I would like to present the uh, ENCODE element browser and the 3D Geno browser that our lab have built to help, uh, hopefully, to increase the accessibility of the ENCODE data. Uh, so the ENCODE element browser um, is the first thing we're going to cover, and it it, it broadly is a suite of four tools, and um, it covers two types of data. One is uh, gene expression, and the other one is cis regulatory elements, and this part actually ties back into um, the data set that, or, uh, that Michael talked about. Um, and then the next browser is a 3D, 3D genome browser, which um, uh, visualizes uh, high c and chia pet data. So, uh, so what are the goals for this uh, browser? Why, were we, why do we make it? So um, as I said, uh, one, of the, one of the goals is so that the user could query for the most relevant, you know, uh, most relevant ENCODE data. And um, ENCODE have generated millions of uh, data, and it's important to uh, isolate the ones that you need for your own uh, biological experiments. Um, and the next component is to uh, visualize complex data, and this is especially true for HiC uh, and Chia Pet. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the last part is providing an additional layer of evidence. Uh, uh, as was said, um, it's difficult to know what the target gene is, it, even given uh, the cis regulatory element, because um, it, the cis, cis regulatory element may not uh, regulate the closest gene um, that's relative to its position. So um, uh, high c and uh, chromatin ligation exper experiments are important to find the um, chromatin loops that develops between uh, the uh, cis regulatory element and the gene promoter. So the high c browser is also geared toward that. And hopefully those are, are used to guide any um, biological validation experiments. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive in. So, uh, well, I see a bunch of Macs. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a lot of Macs, okay. Um, but let, let us get started. So first, we are going to do the uh, ENCODE element browser. And uh, let's first go to the encodeproject.org website. Um, and then just follow what the uh, this animated animated GIF is showing. So click on data and notations. And below annotated genomic regions, there is query tool at Penn State, and to arrive at the uh, at the Penn State website. Pardon me. I, th I think so, it's not. Did it, does anybody have else have this issue? Okay. I, th I think the most important thing is just go click data and then click annotation. Uh, they will show you this, this link. Okay, and click on human, the human tab, uh, to access the, the human data. And let us enter the gene uh, IKZF1, the Icarus DNA binding, zinc finger one. Uh, and uh, enter it under option one, uh, like the, uh, the GIF is trying to show. So did anybody get, get the, uh, this page here? Everybody get, yeah, okay. So uh, as you can see this page, uh, so this, this is, option one is gene expression. So 
we're looking at the uh, expression of uh, the Echorus family uh, pro uh, gene here across uh, 80 plus tissues. And um, so here is the gene ID with a lot of synonyms. Oh, and then before I forget, um, so the first part, you, you, uh, so here we enter the gene symbol, but you can actually enter uh, the RevSeq ID or Uniprod ID as well. And um, when you enter uh, the ID with a symbol, uh, the website should prompt you to the correct spelling. Uh, just if, if the, you see no prompts, that means there's something wrong with your spelling. So be careful with that. Uh, okay, so okay, so we see the bar graph in RPKM, and then below that is the list of uh, uh, basically the list, uh, the the bar graph, the the information that the bar graph is com trying to convey in a table format, and uh, the uh, IKZF1 gene is is a protein that is involved in hemato uh, uh, hematopoiesis as well as immune system development. So, uh, so it makes sense, uh, as you can see, there is um, the cells that have rel relatively high expression is CD20, uh, GM12878, K562, and so on. Uh, and if you think the uh, label on the um, bar graph is too small, you can actually click on it to get a large image and you can read the label from, from that. Okay, so the next two options, option two and three, uh, directly stems from uh, Michael's presentation, uh, the data set that he presented. Uh, so it queries for the candidate cis regulatory element regions with uh, DHS or transcription factor binding site. Um, and it's a fast and easy way to really determine the cis regulatory elements as well as their tissue specificity. Um, so without further ado, uh, go back to the, um, I guess, click on the back button and under option two, uh, select chromosome seven and uh, that's 50 million and 300,000 uh, 300, for the start and 50 million and 305,000 for the end. and then click Submit. Okay, so you'll see um, a pretty busy page, but uh, the gist of, uh, the gist of, of what you see is gonna be the DNAs, uh, the D DHSs and the TF binding sites. And then what uh, the identity of the transfactor binding, if applicable, and the tissue that um, the uh, region occurs in. And as you could see, um, you see a lot of immune-related immune cells, which is very applicable to Icarus. Okay, so it is not always, um, I guess it, it is, people don't really remember the regions that they want out of the top of, my head, out, out of, the top of, out of their head. So the next tool complements option two. Option three, um, actually you can enter a gene and as well as an extended region, extended window, which, um, and then to search these cis regulatory elements. So for, for option three, let us um, enter uh, IKZF1. And for extended region, if you don't put anything there, it is 20 KB. But let's, let, let's put one for today because there are a lot of people trying to access the data at the same time. Okay, so um, you see this page, which, which is very similar to the page that you saw before, except this, uh, this time it is more honed in toward, uh, toward the gene. Um, and as you can see, the cells that, re that are here are also immune related, which is very appropriate. Okay, and then uh, next one is option four. And option four is actually 
um, as, as Michael talked about, um, it's actually trying to correlate the activity uh, between a proximal DHS and a distal DHS. And as you can recall, uh, proximal DHS is um, uh, a DHS that's, that's a near transcription start site of a gene, but the distal T, uh, uh, THS have some sort of uh, cis-regulatory cis function, uh, enhancer function. And, uh, and as you see for this example, if we correlate the activities of DH, DHSA with the distal DHS, there is very low uh, correlation between the two um, because the, uh, the DH, D, DHSA is active in the tissue in which the distal uh, DHS is not active in. Um, but this is not the case with DHSB uh, because DHSB and the distal DHS actually active in the same tissue or similar tissues, uh, set of tissues. So that means they have high, high correlation and this is, uh, and when this occurs, the, the pair of DHS is referred to as linked. So DHS linkage. And when they're linked, there means there's some sort of biological uh, connectivity between uh, the two. And for more information, you can refer to the Thermit et al. paper in um, Nature 2012. So without further ado, let's try this out on um, the uh, Element Browser. So under option four, enter the IKZF1 gene again and click on Submit. Okay, so uh, so you should see uh, the page up, uh, the page that looks like this. Um, so the first three columns is the proxim the prox the location of the proximal DHS, which um, is near this uh, gene in the center column, and the next three columns are the, is the location of the distal DHS, and the last column represents their correlation. And um, and those these DHS is only recorded when their correlation is above. 0.7, and um, so I took uh, one of the uh, a higher correlating DHS pairs, uh, the uh, 0.96, this location here, and I actually run it through option two, which searches uh, elements in a given genomic region, and I saw that there is a transcription factor binding site, which is the, for uh, EBF1 and ELF1. These two are also transcription, fact, uh, transcription factors that are involved in um, immune de development. So, which is um, which is uh, kind of uh, which is uh, uh, agree agreeable with uh, Echoresis function. So, this means that there is some sort of biological connectivity between the two. And indeed, if you knock out any of these genes, you're gonna, the patient is going to develop ALL. Um, so, uh, so, this is, so, this um, sort of illustrates that these suite of tools are meant to be in, used in concert to really, um, find out, uh, to really find out the answer to your biological question. And uh, keep in mind that uh, correlation doesn't imply causation. Uh, just because these two transcription factors um, correlate with Icarus doesn't mean that they necessarily um, directly regulate. Um, so uh, we need an additional layer of evidence to see if, if the, it indeed regulation happens. And this bring, brings me to the um, 3, 3D genome you know, browser. Uh, so, the 3D Genome Browser's URL is 3dgenome.org. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so the question was, can you download the data somehow? Um, you could. 
save the page as a HTML, um, and then export it to uh, to uh, Excel. Yeah, so let me answer, answer a question. I think all the files can be downloaded. All the files we used actually, majority of them are from uh, the encode portal, the annotation page. They can be downloaded. And the, the linkage file we used are from uh, John Stamps' uh, Nature 12, uh, 2012 paper. And that file can be downloaded from that paper. We will use another updated version soon. Yeah. Uh, well, the question is not to download the whole data, but part of the data, right? Yeah. Um, I th yeah, we'll add that option in the future. Um, if you if you don't know how to use XML, that's fine. Um, okay, so is everybody at the three to yeah? I think it will be uh, really nice if we can. Uh, just click to the option two from the result of the option seven. Um, so, so yeah, that. Yeah, th that's, that's uh, yeah, that's actually, I had an epiphany this morning that I should do that. So yeah, that'll be done soon. Okay, so is everybody at the 3dgenome.org website? Okay, um, so there's two, two parts to this website. The first part is the visualization of the high c the high c Genome Browser, and the second part is the visualization of um, a virtual 4C. And 4C, as you know, is a, a one to many uh, query of the chromatin interactions data. And the reason it's, it's uh, virtual, um, so you're looking at uh, the interactions of your lo loci, a locus of interest toward the other loci. And the reason it's called virtual 4C is um, it's derived from the high C data. It's actually not experimentally derived, so that's why it's virtual 4C. And then, and then w along with the virtual 4C is the Chia Pet data. And uh, unlike the Element browser, uh, this part of the website um, requires JavaScript and HTML5. So most modern browsers um, actually include these two, but if you haven't updated your browser in a long time, I really recommend you to do that. Um, uh, not only to access the website, but only for security concerns as well. Okay, so the main features of um, these two browsers, you can easily browse some of the high C, uh, uh, the high quality published high C data available, including the ones that were generated for ENCODE. And you can com contextualize the data with a customizable UCSC browser session. And, and lastly, you could browse your own high C data, and we'll show you how to do that. OK, so let's click on high C interactions tab at the top. And let's enter uh, the, the gene SOX2 and click on Show Interactions. Um, so uh, as with the uh, Alamram browser, we have two options. One is search by uh, gene name, and the other one is search by location, if you know the exact location. And uh, this part I'll explain later, the UCSC browser session in which you can upload your own session, uh, not the default one that's loaded here, but your own session with your own customized tract. So if you have clicked uh, submit, you might have to scroll down a little bit so the high C image is uh, not yeah, shown yeah. Make on sure the first you page. Down. Yeah. Um, uh, so for this session only, I actually uh, like I actually filled in a customized uh, browser session so people could use. Okay. So this is the result results page. So remember to scroll down. And um, so in the center is your high C heat map. And um, you can adjust intensity with the, uh, this bar up here. And um, uh, uh, at the top is the navigation bar in which you can zoom in or zoom out, move left and move right from the region that you're, we're currently in. 
And then below is the UCSC Genome Browser, and it should be uh, aligned to the HiC data. So everybody got that page? Okay, so what, what am I looking at with that weird triangle? So normally the high c data is the, the heat map visualization of the contact matrix of an n by n matrix. And um, this matrix is, uh, so each, um, the size of n is determined by the resolution of the matrix. Um, and uh, the, the, normally the high c matrix is diagonally symmetrical, which means that um, if you want to look at the interaction of loci n minus two with uh, uh, loci three with loci n minus two, um, it's going to be the same whether you're on this side of the diagonal with this side of the diagonal. So to um, to really save um, some time and energy, we cut off the upper triangle out. So what you see is actually the rotated upper uh, upper triangular part of the matrix. Okay, so this part um, I'm going to actually go to. Okay, so does everybody, that everybody have this, right? Okay, um, so you could adjust um, the intensity of the matrix with uh, this bar here. So if you increase uh, the value here, only the values that are up, uh, the high C matrix value that are up here are going to be cut off and represented as red. And if you increase this value down here, um, the values that are less than that are going to be represented as um, as white. If you move the if you move the bar close together to increase the um, uh, increase the contrast, you can see more localized interactions. Um, so if you want a more precise control of, um, of the value, cut of values, you can use the arrows up here to either increase or decrease the, uh, the values here, and then click on refresh, or you can just directly enter the values you like. And then click on refresh. Okay. Um, so this is, oh, it's not showing up? Oh, okay. I've been talking to myself. Um, Okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry about that. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me go over that part again. So you can slide these sliders to increase or decrease the cutoff values um, for your matrix. Or you can uh, directly manipulate the values with the arrows here. And then click refresh or you can directly just input the values you want as the um, cutoff. Click refresh. And that's the, um, uh, that's actually the uh, contrast that I like. And then if you scroll down a bit, you could actually, uh, you can notice some, um, some uh, really high signals. You can find out what two loci contribute to that signals just by clicking on it. And then it will extend a gray bar within the uh, UCSC Genome Browser. And you can look at, um, it looks like it's really near the, um, the transcription start site of SOX2. And it looks like over here we got some, 
um, histone modifications, uh, the uh, K27 acetylation. So it could be a potential enhancer here. So if, if I'm not sure, I could um, just double click on the region and then we, we would zoom in to the region of interest. Hmm, not much here, huh? And then we could, we could adjust uh, the intensity, as I said. But let's, um, and then remember these, um, these navigation bars here. You can uh, always click here to zoom out. Okay, and then um, is the UCSC genome browser aligned for everybody, or is it off by a bit? Um, yes. I'm not sure about whether it's aligned, because if you scroll the bottom, you know, it's getting defined positions. So the bottom scroll bar, just to the bottom of it. Here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is uh, meant to be scroll scrollable. This is meant to be scrollable. You're so, um, so the user is supposed to find the optimal scroll and then click on set UCSC scroll. Um, so there's a default value in which the track should be, should align to the high, C, uh, the high C matrix. So if you have a different browser or a different uh, operating system, it's possible that you're off by a little bit. And when that happens, you can just manually align it okay. yourself and click on set UCSC scroll. Um, and then, as I said, you can, we can manipulate this track, um, UCSC browser session, however we want. So let's give an example. So let's say, um, I'm a, let me change the Chrome HMM data. Um, instead of dense, I want pack here. And then scroll up and click Submit. So you will interact with this window here as you would a UCSC, uh, if you were on UCSC page. And then, um, and then we notice that the, the alignment is sort of screwed. So um, we want to scroll all the way up so that you see zero for, for the horizontal and vertical scroll here, and you see the upper left page of the, uh, upper left corner of the page, and then you click on align UCSC, and then the alignment is done automatically for you. And then you can scroll down to see um, the different tracks. And, as, as, uh, and I changed this track to pack, so that's what you see here. So, um, so now with this session here, if you just um, manipulate whatever region you want. The track stays constant. Um, so this is a customized session just, just for the user. Okay, let's go back to the slide. Um, so as I said, it's possible to use your own data, and to do that, we, conver we can convert um, our um, high C matrix data, contact ma ma matrix data, into a file format called the Butler format, the binary upper triangular matrix file. And this is a file format that's pioneered by our lab. And this file, uh, the goal for this file is um, that it will act the same as big wig or or big bed with UCSC. So, we, uh, so it's a binary index file, so we can query, query the regions that we want. Um, as, as long as you put this file in this uh, file format in the remote server and enter the um, URL, um, the, the data browser, uh, the, our 3D genome browser will query that particular, um, the file in the particular region, region that you want without having, have, having to upload the entire matrix file onto our server. And the Butler file has many um, advantages. So it decreases disk memory usage, because it's binary and indexed. 
and allows random access. So this increases the portability of the file, the speed of the file, we manipulate in memory, and so on. OK, so the last part um, is the uh, virtual 4C and Chia pad data. So, um, so if, you, if you go up to the, um, to the, uh, the tabs, uh, click on virtual 4C. And this time, we're going to do um, the gene BCR1, the B cell receptor 1. And then the extended region, the default is 500 uh, KB, uh, if you leave that blank. Um, but you can enter 500 there. And then um, you can click on Go to re uh, retrieve your virtual 4C region. And as you can see here, you can choose a um, as you can see here, you can choose, you can choose a, a, a Chia pet data that is relevant to the cell type, which is uh, GM12878. And you can actually change the tissue um, of interest that you look, look at. And then uh, also down here is the uh, UCSC Genome Browser session that you want to enter. And I, as I said, I, pro I provide a default one for us today for the demo. So after um, you click Go, uh, here is a page you should see. Um, uh, the, the color here might be a bit different. but um, So we have the navigation bar. So you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, your region of choice. And then if you enter a gene or a SNP, it actually uh, ta takes that point, and that becomes your, uh, your bait loci, where your loci of interest, lo bait locus, or locus of interest. And and uh, grabs the virtual 4C for you. If you enter a gene, it actually uh, takes the TSS as the, uh, as the region of interest. And then it, it grabs the virtual 4C uh, plot for you. And this is supplemented with the DHS linkage data um, that, as I, uh, that is uh, uh, produced by uh, Dr. John Sam's lab. And the DHS linkage, so different color, um, uh, the uh, different colors represents one set, uh, different sets of proximal and distal uh, DHS uh, that ha are highly correlated. And then down here you see this chia, chia, pet, uh, uh, chia pet data in which the loci that interact are, um, uh, are represented as an arc. And of course, down there is a UCSC Genome Browser. So if I go to the page here, um, so the uh, wait. what is it? <laughs> yeah, we shall go. To Uh, so uh, you can a you could actually uh, up here, as I said, there is um, you can click on whichever th THS um, the the BCR one gene actually have two THS. So this is one. You can click on this tab to get the other one. And then, as you can see, this uh, this is not aligned. So you can click on align, and this is automatically aligned for you. And then if you if you mouse over any region of interest on the virtual 4C plot, you can see um, the corresponding region in the other um, tracts. So here, we go back to the first region. You can see a peak here, which interacts strongly with the, um, well, of course, the, T the TSS is going to interact strongly with itself. But the next strongest point is here, which looks like there is some weak, um, there's some uh, weak uh, H3K4 uh, monomethylation. Uh, and then as you can see, there's actually some Chia pet arc that, that is, goes from here to a region that's close to the TSS. Not quite, but pretty close. And then um, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, 
DS, DHS linkage data. I think there is a little bit of brown there and a little bit of brown here, which, in, which um, uh, indicate that those two regions do correlate activity-wise. Okay. Whoops. Okay, so that was our um, browsers. And then I would like to thank you. Uh, thank everybody who provided the data for us, uh, Dr. S uh, Stam and Dr. Wong, uh, as well as Dr. Hardison as well, and the entire ENCODE group. And uh, we, this, uh, the, the browsers are still in their infancy, so we'll w welcome any feedbacks. Thank you. I think we have uh, uh, asked many questions. Let's just move on to the next speaker. Um, Dr. Uh, Luca Panillo from uh, Dana Farber. So he's going to give a tutorial on Chrome HMM, which is one of the most popular tools uh, these, these days. And hopefully by the end of this half an hour, you can probably claim you will be able to run it. Or you've seen how it is, uh, how it is run. All right. 